All right, chapter six, we're going to get into what's called a random variable. And so we'll build on this, but random variables are beginning to show us some properties that are going to happen in different types of distributions. The most common one being our binomial distribution, which with binomial means two. Binomial is telling me that what's going to go on is that I'm only going to worry about successes and failures. So we've got to have some building blocks to start with. So what we're going to look at in this first section is we're going to talk about discrete random variables and continuous random variables. Okay, When we talk about discrete, we're talking about a countable number of outcomes. Okay, So we're going to talk about that with the situation with the flipping the three coins. Okay, When I flip my three coins, there's a countable number of outcomes. Now, the random variable idea is no longer am I going to say, well, I could get three heads, I could get two heads and a tail, and so on and so forth. When we talk about random variables, and this will come up on the next page, we're going to talk about in terms of a numeric value. Okay, and so what's going to take on is that we're going to always be looking at whole numbers, okay, with our random, discrete random variables. Okay, because we're not going to look at outcomes in terms of variables and letters and things like that. We're always going to look at it as a count or a number of things. So maybe when I flip these coins, I'm concerned about the number of times heads comes up. Okay, so it may happen that none of the times heads come up. I may get one of those two coins to be heads or two of the three or maybe all three. Okay. So we're going to talk about our random variables in terms of a number of something. And then we're going to build a probability distribution again, simply our table. Okay. And so we'll use that to answer a number of questions. Now, we'll see these probabilities later. I'm just going to put them in for now. And one of the things to bring up again is that, say I have one head, you know, heads coming first, heads coming second, or heads coming third, that's why we have three of my eight possible outcomes. Again, eight possible outcomes, multiplication principle. Two outcomes for the first, two for the second, two for the third, two times two is eight. Okay, So that's what we're going to look at with discrete. Continuous means we have an infinite number of possible outcomes. Or so many that we can't count them. Okay, And what we're going to do a lot of times with that is we're going to use the normal distribution. So we'll go back to an earlier chapter where we got to talk about z-scores and doing stuff like that. Okay, so here's your definition. Random variable takes on numeric. Okay, so we're using numbers. We're not going to talk about, you know, heads. We're not going to talk about jack of hearts and things like that. We're going to talk about how many do times that something happened. Okay, so it takes on numeric values that describe the outcomes of the process. Okay. Probability distribution gives your possible values, and what we want to do is list them as this. X equals the number of whatever we're counting as a success. Okay, so the number of times heads comes up. Okay, number of times tails comes up. Number of times I roll an odd number, and then also their probabilities. Okay, now when we put these together, we still want to check to see is this probability distribution going to be legitimate? So we still want to go through. We still want to go through and check to make sure they're legitimate, which means, again, every probability has to be between 0 and 1 inclusive, and they have to add up to 1. Okay. So here's a situation, one of the examples. They talk about APGAR scores. And so one of the things that they ask is, is it legitimate? So we have to check, do they all have probabilities between 0 and 1 inclusive, yes, and then do they add up to 1, yes. Now the piece I want to show you just quickly is the idea of the histogram when we put that on the calculator. And how did I come up with this? Okay, We're used to putting our data into the calculator. Okay? And so what I'm going to do in this situation, it's already in there, is I'm going to put my outcomes okay, in list 1 and my probabilities in list 2. Okay, now one thing I just also noticed that this shouldn't say value, it should say x equals, okay, the score, the APGAR score that this person received. Okay, so I'm going to put those in list one and list two. Now, what's going to change is that when we go and set up my histogram, okay, is that now my frequency no longer can be one. 
Okay. When I want to use both of those rows, I have to have my x's. What I'm graphing is how many ones, how many twos, how many threes, so on and so forth. But my frequency, how often they occur, that's what's in this two. Okay. Now, we're so used to hitting zoom nine when we get to this point that we have it all set up and ready to go. Okay. Now, the histogram looks nothing like the one I had. When we deal with this in terms of our, our discrete random variables, you have to set up your window. Okay, now one of the things, start with your lowest. Okay, my highest possible score was 10. I'm always going to go one farther because, again, remember when I build up that bar that starts at 10, it goes up to but doesn't include 11s. And I'm going to go by ones. Okay, gives me a little better look. But now I got a lot of space in there from the top of that last or that biggest bar to the top. So the other thing I can do is I can change my y values. Okay. Now I'm going to leave my y min and the negatives because that way when I go in and do my trace, I can see where I'm at and it gives me that data without it overlapping my distribution. But what I am going to change is my y max. And what I'm going to look at is the largest value I have in terms of my probabilities is 0.437. So I just need to go bigger than that. So maybe I go 0.5. And then what I'd want to do with my scales is not necessarily go up by 1s if I'm going the highest point being 0.5, so maybe I go to 0.1s. Okay. Not a big deal, but kind of lets us see what's going on again. Describe, I got skewed left situation here. Um, again, I have my peak and so on and so forth. Now, when we talk about probabilities here, with um, discrete random variables, all I'm going to do again is look at my table. If I want to know what's the probability that somebody scored 7 or higher, well, that could also be st stated as what's the probability they scored higher than 6. But again, all i got to do is add those values up. Okay, so discrete are pretty much dealing with what we did in the last chapter. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to look at is what we're going to talk about is my mean or expected value. Okay. And so going back to this page, if I went and played roulette at Vegas for three days straight and I talked about my mean or my expected value what I'm saying if I play roulette many times okay so that's why I said three days don't move if I play many times on average How much can I expect to win? Each time I play. Not how much can I expect to win after three days, but how much can I expect to win each time I play? Okay. Now, there's 38 spots on the roulette wheel. Okay. You got two green. 18 red, 18 black. Let's say you win if it lands on red. Now notice, again, I want to put it down as x equals. Maybe I put down the amount I win because if I get it to land on red, I get a dollar. Okay, but if I don't land on red, then I have to give up a dollar. Okay, so. Think about rolling a die. If I roll a die six times, I kind of expect to see a one, two, three, four, five, and a six on those six rolls. I know it doesn't happen every time. Okay. But that's what I would expect. Kind of when I flip a coin. I expect to flip it twice to make sure I see heads and tails. Okay. So if I roll it 38 times on the roulette wheel, I expect it to land on every one of those spots. So I expect to win 18 out of 38 times. I expect to lose 28 out of 30 times. Okay. So let's say. I play 38 times. I expect to win 18, meaning I get $18. Okay. I expect to lose 20 times. Okay. Or overall, I'm going to lose $2. But I'm going to lose $2 over 38 games. Okay. Which comes out to be something like this, negative 0.05. Okay. But that's just 38. And again, remember, that's a short run. We need to have a long run many times. Okay. But if I kept playing and playing and playing and playing and playing, I would expect it to balance out that each of those spots came out about the same number of times. What this means is on average, 
lose five cents every time I play. Okay. Now, it's very easy to calculate this out. Okay. What it says is that I'm simply going to take an outcome times the probability of that outcome. Take another outcome times the probability of that outcome. So on and so forth. And all I'm going to do is add those together. Okay. So what I would be doing here is I would take this outcome times its probability. I would take this outcome times its probability and add those two together. And that's going to give you your five cents. Okay. All right. Now, this is new notation. Mu sub x. This is the mean, because again, mu is your mean. And the subscript x means of my random variable x. So back here, it's the mean amount that I expect to win, because that's what x is talking about. So anytime we put together that table, okay, so for instance, going all the way back to APGAR, if I went and found the mean here, it would be the mean score I would expect to see if somebody took this test. Okay. All right. Now, the next piece then is to talk about your standard deviation. Okay. Now, with my standard deviation, okay, we want to think about how did I calculate standard deviation when I just had a list of numbers which was given here. What I did was I found my mean. Okay. And then what I did was I found the distance or the deviation. Each observation was from that mean. And then I squared it because, again, the idea is that I want to keep those values positive. Added them all up. Divided by 1, again, my degrees of freedom. It allows for some variability because we're talking about a sample, not my population. And then divided by that. So, but the difference here is that I'm going to divide by my probabilities, which are multiplied by my probabilities, which is going to divide by, again, how many times I play. So again, going back to roulette, I could go with that 38 again. Okay. What we need to remember is a couple of things here. Okay, not how to find the formula so much, but again, one, that my variance is equal to my standard deviation squared. Okay. Notation. Okay. Sigma squared, again, that's variance. Simply having sigma, that's your standard deviation. Now, when I throw the x in there again, this is my variance of random variable x. Okay. Now, we're going to make this easy, and we're going to use the calculator. Okay. We could go a long way, or this is what I want you to write down and have in your notes. All I need to do, okay, and we go back to our APGARS thing, is all I need to do is go to my one variable statistics, okay, and then I need to put in the two lists that I'm using, okay, separated by a comma. And when I get this, all right. That is my mean, or my mu sub x, and this is my standard deviation, sub x. So if I'm actually looking for my variance, then again, what we have to do is square it. Okay? And you have to understand which one we're looking for. Do, uh, am I looking for my variance? Am I looking for my standard deviation? All right, so I'm going to stop it there.